<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all if you have a jailbroken or hen capable PS3, how you can back up and play your PS3 games using Multiman. Now, I know there's several different game managers and loaders out there. I still prefer to use Multiman, so that's what I'm going to use. And if you want to adapt this to your own application, that's totally fine. You're just going to be a little on your own for that, but it's just going to cover the basics here. So first of all, you're going to need your PS3. Make sure you're able to install and run Multiman. So that means you're going to need a jailbroken system, or you're going to need a system with HIN installed on it. The next thing you're going to need is a PS3 game disc. So I have my disc on hand already. I'm just going to pop it into my system here. Now, as you can see, my copy of Painkiller does show up here. So this is the game I'm going to be dumping and using in this example, but I'm also going to be showing a few other things. So I'd recommend you have a FTP connection if you want to copy games to and from your PS3 using your network and also a flash drive because I'll show you finally how to also play your games through a flash drive on your PS3. So for this, what we can do is first of all, once you have your game, go down to Multiman. Once Multiman opens, go over to your game section and make sure that it is showing up on disk, which it shows right here. Press the triangle button, go to copy, and copy it to your PS3 hard drive. So press X. It's going to ask if you want to copy this to your internal hard drive, to which you say yes. And depending on how big your game is, this can take a few seconds or it can take, you know, an hour, depending on what it is. Since this is a very small two gigabyte game, it should take me less than five minutes to copy it. So just wait for this to copy over to your internal system. All right, so once this is done on your PS3, as you can see, you should get a screen such as this, where you can just press square to continue. And that has now been installed on the PS3. So you have disk and you have hard drive right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to eject this disc because we are not going to need it at this point. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you all is if you want to do a transfer using FTP. So for this, all you need to do is go to here, go to your settings, system information, press X, and your IP address should show up. Now press back and just sit here in Multiman and let it run. Because as long as Multiman is running, your FTP server should be up and running. And from here on out, we can now go over to our PC, where I can show you a few of the other ways that you can do this, such as transferring games through network or through USB. Now, if you are going to be doing this over your network, what you need to do is download a FTP program such as WinSCP, FileZilla, whatever you're going to be using. I'm going to be using WinSCP for this. Once you open up whatever FTP program you're using, just make sure you're doing this over FTP, no encryption, and the host name is going to be the IP address which showed up. So mine's going to be 192.168.1.177, port 21, and you can do an anonymous login. And I'd also recommend saving this if you want to. But once you do all that, click login. I'd also highly recommend doing this with a wired connection on your PS3, just so you have the best network capabilities between your computer and your PS3. But on the right is our PS3. So go to dev hard drive zero, and go to games and in here where it says games this is where our game has been dumped so for this i'm going to go to a place on my computer where i'd like to save it so here i have a couple games i've already dumped before and on the right i have the game i just dumped so i'm going to just download this because i want this on my pc and that is how you at least back up a game onto your PS3, and then you can transfer it to your PC if you'd like to. Now, if you're at all wondering why you might want to transfer this over to your PC when it's sitting nicely on your PS3, it can be for a few reasons. First of all, we are trying to back this up, so when I'm backing things up, I like to have them on my PC as well. The other thing is if you're going to be backing up several of your PS3 games, it does absolutely help to have them available on your PC in case you run out of storage or if you're just doing this for archival and backup purposes so you have all them available. And that way, whenever you feel like playing a certain game, you can simply go to your PC and transfer it over to your PS3 using FTP so you don't have a PS3 completely full to the brim full of games that you cannot swap out. So you always have those available and you don't have to worry about redumping the disc. So now, as you can see, we have our game sitting on the PS3 
and I also have it sitting here on my PC along with my two other games. If you want to transfer any games from your PC to your PS3, it's literally the exact opposite of this. You make sure you go to your games folder on your PS3, find where it is on your PC, right click, and upload it into your games folder. And after you do any sort of transfers on your PS3, it does help to go over to where your games are at and click on refresh. And once it refreshes, it will look on any of the USB drives, internal drive or disk drive for any games that you have just added to the system and it will populate them here. So with FTP out of the way, I'm going to close out of this and I'll also show you how you can copy games to a USB drive and play them off of there. Now there are a couple tools that I would recommend you use. The first one is going to be GUI format and there's going to be links for everything down below in the description or FAT32 format. You can just click on this photo here and you can download it. The next one is going to be PS3 Splitter. This is going to be for any games that have files that are larger than four gigabytes in size. So for this, you can just go to download and download the latest version and install it. Now, some of you might be asking here why you might want to use GUI format tool or FAT32 format. Generally, if you have a small enough flash drive, you can just right click the flash drive, click format, and then pick FAT32. My drive is big enough to the point where I cannot do that, and you might be doing it on something bigger such as a 500 gigabyte or a one terabyte hard drive. As long as it is a external USB drive of some kind, you can use it, but it just needs to be formatted to FAT32. So therefore, what I'm going to do is close out of this, open up GUI format, and then make sure you have your drive selected. Mine is H, and you wanna make sure you do this so you don't accidentally format anything that you don't want to. So make sure any files you care about you have backed up before you do this format. And then keep the allocation unit size the same. Quick format is fine, and press start. It's gonna ask if you really want to format and say okay. And if you get this error right here, that means that this is open in something else. So I wanted to cover this because having a folder open such as this, where the flash drive is showing on the left, is enough to stop this. So you're going to need to quit out of anything that is touching or pointing to that drive. And you can press OK, and then just start again. And as you can see, it formats it with no issue. So with all that done, I'm just going to close. And let me check the flash drive. From here, I should be able to right click and verify through properties that the flash drive is indeed FAT32 setup, which is what we want. So there we go, we formatted it with no issue. So for this, there's a few things that we can do. The first thing on your flash drive is let's copy over Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. So this is my own game that I've dumped previously. Go to your flash drive and create a new folder and call it games all capital with a S. You could also do it with a Z as well and it will work. So whichever you prefer, if you wanna make it look cooler, you can put a Z, but I'm going to put a S on mine. And inside of the games folder, you just want to paste in your game. So I'm just going to wait a few minutes for this to copy over, but in the end, we should have Call of Duty 4 copied onto this flash drive. So now Call of Duty has copied over successfully, but you might run into a few games which are very large in size, which you cannot copy to your flash drive. And I'll show you an example. This right here is another game I've dumped, which is Resistance Fall of Man. And I'm going to show you the exact file that's giving me an issue. So you can go in here, and this file, as you can see, is over six gigabytes in size. And if I try and copy and paste it to my flash drive, I straight up get an error saying greater than four gigabytes on FAT32. That is a limitation of FAT32. That is nothing wrong with your PS3 or your drive itself. So we need to end up bypassing that. Now there's two ways that we can bypass this issue. The first way is going to be transferring this game internally to our PS3 using FTP and Multiman. However, what if you just want to play it off a USB drive? Well, the second way is going to be splitting up any problematic files. And I'll show you how to do that here using PS3 Splitter. Once you open up PS3 Splitter, let's go ahead and set up the options here. Now I'm going to use default, but I'm going to leave my original files intact. So therefore I'm not destroying the original file just in case. And I'm also going to use a standard split file right here. And you can check for updates on startup if you want to. Now, with all that being optioned, you can now click on Execute, and you're going to need to find exactly where your game is. So you're just going to want to select this game folder using PS3 Splitter. And once you've clicked it, as you can see, it found one large file, 
it's now going to begin splitting this file right here. So make sure you have this path in mind. Once that's been complete, it will say finish directories check, and you can press OK and make sure you make note of where this file is. Because right here, you can go to resistance, game, and here's the original file, which we will not be copying over, but here are the six files it was split into, well actually seven files, which we can then transfer over to our FAT32 formatted drive. So essentially what we can do for this is we can simply make a copy of this here, go back to our USB drive, games, paste, and it will run into that problematic file. And when it gets to that, we can simply just skip that file during the copy. So it's going to copy all of the files. Actually, it's doing it right here. It's going to copy all of these split game files, but it's not going to copy the original file, which is over four gigabytes in size. So again, this can all be bypassed if you just want to transfer the game internally to your PS3, but if not, we can use this method. All right, so as you can see, the game just finished transferring and all my files copied just fine, except for this one right here, which is that same problematic one, which is as expected. So I'm going to close out of this and everything should be here. So if I go to the same directory, the game file, has now been split up into these seven parts. So for your original, if you want to change it, I'll go to resistance here. And what I generally do is once I finish copying it over, I just personally delete the split files because I can always regenerate them, but I keep the original file on hand just to maintain the integrity of the game. So once that is all complete, you can simply eject your USB drive and then pop it over onto your PS3. So now I'm over at the PS3. As you can see, same as before, there is no disc in there because I've taken out Painkiller, but I have my USB drive in and I'm just going to open Multiman. And check this out, we now have several games which are showing up on here. So I can even do a refresh and there. Sometimes you just have to do that to get the games to show up. But this is my Call of Duty 4 on the flash drive. Here is my Painkiller on the hard drive. And here is resistance again on the flash drive. So I'm going to show you each of these running briefly here. The first one is Call of Duty 4, which we just copied and pasted to the flash drive with no modifications. So to run this, just press X. And once you're rebooted to your XMB, you can now go here and it's going to show up in two spots. It's going to be in your app home. It's also going to be in a emulated disk, so to speak. So generally these are going to do about the same thing, but I'm just going to use the disk itself. Again, this is not the actual disk. This is actually running off my flash drive, but it is showing up in the same area on both of them. So just boot up whichever one you would like to. And as you can see, I will get a little bit further ahead in here, but the game seems to be running and working just fine. So there's all the intro cinematics, all that fun stuff, sure and it seems to be working, and this is all off the flash drive right now, so we're good to go. So congratulations, that is a game that has just been copied and pasted with no frills, nothing additional added, copied onto the PS3's flash drive with no issue. So next up, let's go ahead and exit out of this and try another game. For our second game, I'm going to use Painkiller. So this is off the hard drive right here. Just again, same thing as before, press X when you want to launch the game that you want to play. For this, all you need to do again is verify it showing up as a disk and even under App Home. And for this, I'll try under App Home. Now this game is actually one of those examples where it actually kicked me out to the XMB as opposed to playing the game, and then I had to boot it using the disk icon. So sometimes it's actually better to use the disk icon as opposed to app home. Really, if one doesn't work for you, try the other. But as you can see right here, this game is loading just fine. I'll let it load into this menu here, but even though it's a little bit slow, I think that's more of the game itself, we should be good to go. So finally, I'm going to boot up our last game, which will be Resistance Fall of Man. So finally, let's go down to Resistance Fall of Man, 
and this is going to be off of our USB drive, and if it is a split game, sometimes it might not show it because you all saw that it didn't have this before, but there is now a icon that says split on here. So Multiman can recognize that. And if you have split your game and it's not recognizing it, it's fine, just try and boot it up. And here it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to press X to boot up the game. And after it verifies, it's going to tell us here, pre-processing required for this title, do you want to install required data to internal hard drive? So here's one thing, if you have a USB drive with this game installed, any of the split files are essentially going to recopy themselves and recompile back onto the internal drive. So once you say yes here, it will set the permissions, and then it will say this operation will be performed only once. So press circle. And now it's essentially going to copy the internal files which you have split on your USB drive and it's going to compile them into one big file on your internal hard drive. So that way it's only going to be playing the files that you split on the internal drive while the rest of the game will be played from your external drive. This is going to be required for games such as this, which is why I wanted to highlight this directly here. Again, this is only done the first time you end up booting up a game such as this, but make sure you end up having enough space on your internal drive. So for example, if you have a 30 gigabyte game and you have split up 12 gigabytes worth of files, that means you're going to need 30 gigabytes on your flash drive, but 12 gigabytes on your internal drive to copy that over but we can just wait here for this to finish installing a portion of the game onto the internal drive. Now, once we exit out to the XMB, we can come up here and check it out. Resistance Fall of Man is showing up, and it's showing up in both spots, but because of our previous luck, I'm going to select the disk here and run this. Now, as you can see, we are all good to go at this point. So again, this is Resistance Fall of Man, which I had previously dumped. This is running on the flash drive, which we had split the file for. So about six gigabytes of the game is installed onto the internal drive itself. And the other pieces of the game are going to be running from the external USB drive. So that's about all we need. I believe this should have covered about everything here. I'll just let it go ahead and do its initial install, but this should cover about everything you'd really need to know for backing up and playing your own PS3 games through Multiman. Again, this covers backing up any games that you have on disk, transferring them over to and from the PS3 using FTP, transferring them to and from the PS3 using USB, playing them, of course, on the PS3, and also handling of game files which are bigger than 4 gigabytes in size, which he wants to play off of a USB drive of some kind. So that's about all we needed to do. Hopefully this video helped out. I know with all the other PS3 videos I did, it kind of seems a little bit funny that this is coming out so late compared to them. I actually thought that I had covered a video showing how to play PS3 games before, but I didn't. I've covered several different jailbreaks. I've covered Han, I've covered Hen, I've covered PS1 and 2 games, but I haven't covered anything for PS3. So this is pretty much my brain dump of everything I know about basic setup of playing and backing up PS3 games on the PS3, hopefully delivered to you all in a easy enough manner to digest, and hopefully you can all now get up and running just fine. Now let's say you're done playing your game from your USB drive, you don't want to play it there again, or you just want to transfer it internally, what have you. The point is you don't want that 6 gigabyte file we just transferred over on your PS3 anymore. You can just go over to your settings, clear game cache data, and then select the game cache that you want to delete, and that's it. So there we go, we've gotten our 6 gigabytes of space back. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. And let me know what you thought of this video. Again, I was actually surprised that this is one of them in my library that I had not worked on before. But now at this point, you should be able to follow along with several of my tutorials and get yourself a jailbroken PS3 and play PS1, 2, and 3 games on it with ease. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off real this time. Later, everyone.